Hello and welcome to the Wolverton Workshop. This video will take a look at the construction of the first building for my N-gauge layout, Wolverton North. Please stand back from the platform edge. As this was my first complete building, I wanted to start with something simple. It seemed appropriate to model a building from Wolverton Station because I live so close to it. The choice of buildings was rather limited as there are only two at the station, the main station building and this which I believe contains telecommunication equipment. Sometimes in this hobby you get to model beautiful structures such as grand stations and elegant hotels but other times you just have to model the entirely unimpressive and forgettable and this is one of those times. Basically it's a brick box with a few doors and a bunch of air conditioning units stuck on the side. I've been involved in 3D printing for over six years now so it's a technology I plan to use on the construction of this layout. There are currently two main types of 3D printer available to the hobbyist, both of which I'll be using on this build. The construction method I've come up with utilises the best aspects of both 3D printers. First, I'll produce an inner shell printed on my FDM, which stands for Fused Deposition Modelling Printer. When you see pictures or videos of 3D printing, it's usually an FDM printer, and they're great for building larger robust items, but it's very difficult to get the level of detail required in Engage out of the prints. That's where the other type of 3D printer comes in. This is called DLP, or Digital Light Processing, and are more commonly known as resin printers. The detail that can be achieved on these printers is incredible, as you can see, but the prints can be delicate and are prone to warping, especially large flat areas. I will use this printer to make up a set of skins that cover this inner shell and add details such as raised bricks, doors and tiles. For comparison, here we have the exact same model printed on both types of printer. The FDM model is very robust and can easily be printed much larger. But if you look at the teeth, the detail in the tips is lost and there are some clearly visible layer lines. The much smaller resin print, however, is incredibly detailed. Playing to the strengths of both printers, you can create robust yet highly detailed models, and that's the combination I have used in this build. So I headed down to the station to take some reference photos. Then, using measurements from Google Maps, I began to model a building in CAD. First, I created the base and inner shell. Then I designed the outer skins and added the surface detail. I also drew up the other smaller parts such as the AC units and the emergency generator that sits beside the building. I printed all the main parts out before beginning any assembly. This is the base unit that will eventually be attached to the layout. It encompasses the building but also the surrounding area all the way up to the fence line. Next is the inner shell for the walls. This will be glued down to the base. And then finally there's the roof, which is a snug fit, so I'll leave this removable to access the wiring for the lights, should I ever need to get to them. As there are no windows in this building, the shell is very simple. Here are all the resin printed parts that make up the skins that will be attached to the shell. My printer isn't huge, so the walls and tiles had to be split into two. My plan is to hide any noticeable seam with wires to reflect those on the real building. You can clearly see the warping that resin prints are prone to, which is why the strong inner shell is so important. Here are all the other smaller details, including the backup generator. This is based on a 20 foot container. I also modelled these three phase cable reels that have been left outside the front of the building. I then carefully applied the wall skins and roof skins to the inner shell. I gave the whole building an undercoat of beige before dry brushing on the brick colour, varying the tone slightly to give a less uniform look. I then gave the walls a wash with light brown to pick out the mortar lines. The roof colour was built up using layers of grey before adding a black wash to give some definition. The AC units were painted separately and once complete it was just a matter of gluing them to the exterior walls. In total there are 8 large units and 2 smaller ones. Next it was time to work on the base. First the paving slabs were installed that run right around the building and then the whole thing was given a base coat of brown. At this point I decided to see if it was possible to print reasonable manholes and it turns out it is. I added some to the tarmac area as well as some within the grass. Using various layers I gave some texture and variation to the tarmac area and once that was complete I also added the first layer of scatter to the grass. Surface mount LEDs were added to represent the 11 security lights around the building. Once installed, I added a dab of paint to these to remove the glare you often get from such LEDs. I used a mix of white and orange to give the idea that some of the lights had been replaced with newer LED fittings. 
Once painted blue and given several layers of weathering, the backup generator was also installed onto the base. Some of the finer detail was also added, such as cables to cover up the joints in the skins and a number of vents. I'm not sure about before lockdown, but in the past few years the greenery around the building has been left to grow quite wild through the summer. As my layout is set in autumn, I want to represent this rather overgrown look. I added the static grass on top of the scatter, as well as some larger weeds. These were a combination of sea foam offcuts and static grass clumps. The cable reels near the small outbuilding were also added to the base at this point. Once I was generally happy with the base area around the building, I added the perimeter fence and I used a set from Ancourt and Models for this. I was a bit concerned that a mesh fence in Engage might be hard to get right, but dulling the shiny silver down really helped blend it into the scene. There wasn't any provision for a gate in the kit, so I 3D printed this frame and cut some of the mesh to fit. I also printed out the no parking sign which is mounted onto the gate. The fence only goes around three sides of the building for now, because the other side faces a disused platform edge, and this will be installed when the station is put together. The fence was pretty fiddly, but I'm generally happy with the result. At this point I glued the walls to the base and added several finishing touches, such as the guttering downpipes and some other external cables and pipework. Finally, I wired all the LEDs back to a custom circuit board located inside the building. It forms part of my lighting control system, but I will cover that properly in a future video. Well, here it is, the first of many buildings for the layout. It might not be an architectural masterpiece, but hopefully I've managed to capture the look of the real building faithfully. Generally, I'm really happy with the building, although at a later date I may revisit the vegetation to add a little more greenery. Next, the plan is to replicate the boiler workshop at Bridge North. Again, not the prettiest building, but this time there's the chance for some internal detail, which I'm really looking forward to. And that's it for this video, so until next time, thanks for watching.